While building my Stormtrooper and Imperial Army, I found a common problem to be paint rubs on uh, figures. Uh, because I buy such sort of poor quality, very play-worn figures, you'll often find the uh, guys with flesh-toned faces have their noses rubbed off. You can see this uh, Attack Commander uh, has his nose missing. And also the black used for the boots and hands is, is generally very worn. Uh, take a look at this uh, Death Squad Commander. You can see most of the paint is missing from his hands. So uh, today I'm going to show you the best paints to use for fixing this. Um, I use Humbrol acrylic paints. Um, the numbers you'll need are the number 33 black which matches the uh, black of the figures very nicely. Uh, the number 61 flesh tone, although it looks very light here, um, when you open the pot it, it almost matches the um, Attack Commander's skin tone perfectly. Uh, you'll also need a white number 34 um, which you'll mix with the pink uh, 61 colour uh, to produce the ATST driver's uh, nose and sort of flesh colour. This is, this is another character that commonly the nose is chipped right off um, and the black of the arms and uh, boots is chipped and worn. I know uh, a lot of collectors don't like uh, figures being touched up and the paintwork repaired but uh, for my army building purposes I, it's perfectly acceptable and I'm only building using the worst figures. If I ever come to sell the figures I will tell people that the figures have been reconditioned but as this is for my personal collection I don't see a problem with doing this. Right let's start the process. So first up we're going to fix the attack commander's nose. Uh, this guy has a fairly sort of reddish uh, tinge to the, the flesh tone they've used on the face and you'll find that the uh, humble number 61 paint although it looks very light uh, on the sticker when you actually open it it's a very dark color and matches the face tone almost perfectly so this you can use straight out of the box uh, just get a very fine brush uh, just need a very delicate amount of it and you can just drop that on his nose um, it really doesn't take much to do this and you can just sort of blend it in a bit um, it works it works remarkably well um, there you go you can see once that's dry that actually dries a lot darker for the um, ATST driver you can see his skin tone is a lot lighter so what you need to do is take some of the flesh tone and just gently mix it with the white um, you'll find just mixing it together ever so slowly you'll you'll be able to lighten this tone right down um, so that it matches his his skin tone perfectly you'll need quite a lot of white mixed in with this to get to get the tone right um, because it's you can see it's a fairly light color so I'm just slowly mixing these together taking a little bit more white each time there you go and that's that's almost right now so let's try that so you see this guy's actually only got a tiny mark on his nose just a gentle dab of that there and that matches that matches perfectly so he no longer has the missing nose problem um, hopefully this guy should have dried a bit by now um, you can see that looks that looks pretty good uh, and for army building purposes I'm perfectly happy with that Right, let's move on to fixing the boots. For the uh, boots and helmet and hands, I'm going to show you on this uh, Death Squad Commander figure. As you can see, the paint has worn pretty heavily on his hands, uh, boots, and a large chunk of the helmet is missing. Um, so for this, I'm going to use uh, Humble Paint, Black Paint number 33. You'll find this gives the best finish when dry. Um, and uh, is, is very easy to apply. Uh, because this guy's got so many rubs on him, I'm gonna do them in a few stages. First, I'll start with the, the, the hands, let those dry, then work on the boots and, and so on. Um, you have to be a bit patient doing this, but uh, it, it gives you a good result. So, first of all, get some of your, your black paint. You don't need a great deal on the brush um, because it, it flows quite nicely. Let's do his uh, hand first. You can see there's quite a lot of paint missing here, so apply it quite liberally. Um, the paint is easy to move around and um, sort of flows into all the cracks and crevices quite easily. Um, you have to be quite sort of careful doing these lines. Um, normally without the camera it's much easier so I'm, I'll, I'll do the best I can while having the camera in front of me today. Um, and just sort of gently paint around. Uh, this guy actually has a little silver mark on, on the side of his hand so I'm going to leave that. Um, I'll 
apply that paint later. Um, so just follow the lines of the of the edge of the glove there. It, it does take some practice. Um, I, I've been doing this quite a lot on these old figures, so I've got fairly used to to, um, to sort of applying the paint quite liberally. Um, and if you if you do make mistakes, this paint takes a little while to dry, so you, there's there's some leeway in um, drying time, and you can rub it off uh, before it's dried completely. Um, so you know, don't don't worry too much if you must make mistakes. All right, there you go. That's one hand done. Um, I'll just show you that. Uh, it looks much better. Um, I'll go and paint the rest of this figure and uh, show you the completed item. Midway through the painting process, you'll often find my work desk covered in figures in, in this sort of position. Uh, I find this the best way to lay the figures down while you're painting uh, boots and hands, uh, as it means you can paint all the boots and hands in one go, and uh, the figures then can sort of stay and dry without uh, getting paint anywhere else. Um, so uh, it's just a, a useful tip there. Uh, the acrylic paint I use uh, dissolves in water while it's still wet. So uh, for cleaning your brushes, you don't need any solvents. You can just use a small uh, amount of water and it will come straight off the brushes. Uh, I find this is the easiest paint to use. You can use solvent based paints, but um, they're a lot more hassle than, uh, than the acrylic ones. It's best to allow the paint to dry for 10 or 15 minutes. There's nothing worse than picking up a figure that's not quite dry and then getting black paint all over it. As you can see, these figures are now uh, fully dry and the end result looks pretty good. Uh, all the chips and marks have gone, especially as you can see on this Death Squad Commander, uh, he's back to looking almost as good as new. Um, so these are now ready to add back into my uh, Imperial Army. Uh, keep checking back on my channel and I'll show you more useful ways for fixing uh, and repairing old vintage toys. Thanks for watching. <laughs>